Hello everyone, welcome to my channel and today we will be discussing a very important topic. Uh, a topic that I have selected from GIT and this is a topic for all the surgeons, for all the residents, for all the MBBS students. This is a less, uh, you can say, understood, more confusing topic. Everyone knows it's a very popular topic but a lot of students are confused. So let me show you one pic and then you can actually uh, make out what it is. So this is an image uh, of an upper GI endoscopy and this is something which is seen in the esophagus. So you are seeing esophagus in front of you and you see a classical picture like this. So what do you think is this all about? So you can confidently say sir this is esophagitis. I will also agree yeah that is esophagitis. But yes there is abrasion all over the esophagus. So basically when you are talking about a lot of abrasions and lot of ab uh, esophagitis, you always take a biopsy and if you see this biopsy, you can see something very particular, very, very, very particular. So there are some goblet shaped cells here. Yes, students, you are guessing it right. So the diagnosis that we have is a classic, classic, classic Barrett's disease. So there could be a lot of things, it could be intestinal. Uh, metaplasia, it could be simply esophagitis, it could be non-erosive versus erosive, lot of things we have. So today's discussion is on the Barrett's esophagus. So when you talk about Barrett's, it's a very, very, very simple topic and it's very easy. In five minutes, we shall learn to understand everything about Barrett's esophagus. Now when we talk about Barrett's esophagus, what are the important things that you need to understand? Barrett's esophagus is nothing but I can say it's end stage GERD. So it's a end stage GERD which is very very simple thing to understand but now let us be more illustrative in this. We are talking about Barrett's. What is the classical definition of Barrett's? It is defined as any length, any length of esophagus. So it's not the length dependent, it, it is length independent. So any length of esophagus lined by lined by columnar epithelium so columnar normally what epithelium do we have we have squamous epithelium so any length of esophagus lined by columnar epithelium with goblet cells now this is what is very 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 important so with goblet cells on on biopsy do you know this goblet cell word is itself very important so goblet cells on biopsy, this is what is making it very, very, very special. Now, in a layman's language, you know that it is the squamous epithelium which is predominant and then we have the uh, columnar epithelium. So do you know there is something which is known as squamocolumnar junction? Normally, it is roughly 1 to 2 centimeter above the G junction, basically the classical G junction. But here if you see, there is upward migration. What we classically see on, uh, you can say, upper G endoscopy is upward upward migration migration of squamo columnar junction this is what is making it very 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 special upward migration of squamo columnar junction or you can also say that it is upward migration of aura serrata aura serrata or you can say upward migration of z line that is the squamo epithelial junction line now, when we're talking about the Barrett's esophagus, we got to understood, we got to understand the basic layout of Barrett's. Now, there are a lot of terminology, terminologies which are to be associated. What is a short segment Barrett's? So, a short segment Barrett's esophagus is defined as less than three centimeter. Then, what is an ultra short, ultra short segment Barrett's esophagus? This is less than one centimeter. Then we have long segment, we have long segment Barrett's esophagus, this is defined as more than 3 cm. You know Barrett's is a pre-malignant lesion, so you have to understand that Barrett's will often lead to what? It will lead to adenocea, so there is a very high risk of adenocea and it is considered as a pre-malignant lesion. Now try to understand what are the types of various Barrett's esophagus. So when you talk about the Barrett's esophagus, we have four classical types of Barrett's esophagus. So first one, and this is straightforward from main go. The first one is Barrett's esophagus without atypia. 
so barrett's esophagus without atp there are no atypical changes point number 1 the second is the second is barrett's esophagus with atp so barrett's esophagus uh, without atp and barrett's esophagus unknown for atp also there is one more thing so barrett's esophagus unknown for atp unknown for atp then the third one that we have is a low you can say low grade lesion so we say lgd low grade dysplasia lgd low grade dysplasia and then we have something which is known as hgd what do you mean by hgd students high grade dysplasia so low grade dysplasia high grade dysplasia these are the end stage you can say lesions of barrett's so low grade dysplasia high grade dysplasia this this is what we actually see now try to understand along with that let us try to make out what is their management so the barrett's esophagus without atp or unknown for atp you go for anti reflux therapy so ppis long term ppis so anti reflux therapy is what is their management and along with that you also need to understand that we need a follow up so annual upper gi endoscopy so annual upper gi endoscopic follow up and remember this is unless two negative unless two negative endoscopy so if you have endoscopy as normal okay so next year again you will follow up so this is annual when you talk about low grade dysplasia what is the management again students you need to understand that you have to go for anti reflux therapy and along with that six monthly six monthly endoscopic follow up so six monthly endoscopic follow up this is what is very 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 important and then we have high grade dysplasia now when you talk about high grade dysplasia before you confer it a high grade dysplasia one very important thing that you need to understand is that repeat so you have to start with anti reflux therapy so anti reflux therapy is what is the first line management and repeat upper gi endoscopy upper gi endoscopy after 3 months now this is what is very 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 important in decision making so after 3 months you will repeat upper gi endoscopy and now on upper gi endoscopy if the diagnosis is still the high grade dysplasia now you need to plan intervention now this is what is very 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 important you need to plan intervention if it is malignancy you know you will manage it like uh, with like esophagectomy done for ec esophagus but if it is still the you can say high grade barrett's esophagus then what is the next thing you have two things you have emr that is endoscopic mucosal resection so endoscopic mucosal resection this is one thing and we also have something which is known as Uh, you can say esmd so what is esmd students emr is endoscopic mucosal esmd is endoscopic submucosal dissection submucosal dissection so endoscopic resection and endoscopic submucosal dissection these are very important things when you talk about intervention on the other side we can have radio frequency ablation also so rfa rf radio frequency uh, uh, ablation and we have a device which is known as hello 360 hello 360 and hello 90 so we have hello 90 also and hello 360 which are actually a device like a you can say a fiber which is uh, having a glass bulb inside and then you can this is a 360 filament this has a 360 degree filament this can ablate or it is a 90 degree uh, you can say instrument designed to mount on the you can say cable of the upper gi endoscopy cable and you can use it so students this is what is very 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 simple in a nutshell what is barrett's esophagus it's a it's a pre malignant state where you have a columnar epithelium with goblet cells so those who still don't know what is the appearance on upper gi endoscopy this is what and on biopsy you get to see classical goblet cells so this is what is very 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 important so just like a routine practice i'll keep on getting many small crisp small videos for you so do subscribe to my channel do share it with your friends and do comment in the comment section what topics do you want me to record for you 
uh, what are the things uh, that you want me to revise with you or whether you liked or didn't like the topic. So thank you. Keep on watching me.